I'm gonna hear about it in the comments. I know. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So for today's video, I am doing a refilm slash re-upload of the glass skin makeup tutorial I did yesterday or I uploaded yesterday because I'll admit the quality was not the best and I had changed some things around. I'm gonna address that really quick, but I honestly, I don't wanna spend too much time on explaining why I'm re-uploading it because I'm kind of doing this for me, but I'm also doing this for people who genuinely wanted to get that tutorial but felt like the audio was a little distracting or the lighting was distracting. So let me go ahead and explain that really quick. Okay, so number one, I think one of the most obvious things was the audio. Now audio, just like focusing a camera, is one of the most frustrating things because if it's off, it's really hard to fix and it essentially kind of ruins the entire video if you can't hear what the person's saying. I tried to fix the audio. It took me days to actually get it to the state it was in because it was actually a lot worse. And we actually did use a mic and a dead cat and all that kind of stuff, but sometimes it just doesn't work out and I didn't want to just scrap the video because I do every once in a while bring in some people to help me film and take pictures. I'm sure you would relate if you've ever tried to take a picture or video of yourself. It's actually quite a difficult task, so sometimes being able to delegate that makes it a little bit easier on my workload. So that's kind of also why the the visuals looked a little different. And I actually did ask her to move the camera around and kind of follow me because I get a lot of comments of people saying they get kind of bored of the tripod setup, but a lot of you guys were saying you actually like the tripod setup. It's hard because it's like you try to fit everyone's needs and what they like and you know, point taken, I'll stick to the tripod for the most part. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about with that actual video is the lighting because the lighting was darker but it was actually done intentionally because I wanted to take out a lot of the artificial lighting so you could actually see what my skin looks like because the thing with lighting is that the more lighting you have, the more it blows out your skin and the less imperfections you see. And I wanted you guys to actually see the imperfections I had on my skin. You can see right now I have my ring light and if I turn this down, Obviously it's a bit darker, but you do see a lot more of the little marks on my skin. I was just, you know, trying to be as realistic as possible because most of us aren't walking around with a, a ring light. <laughs> I wish I could. And last but not least, I know I'm gonna get people in the comment section saying I shouldn't even address this or I shouldn't even talk about this, but then on the like flip side of things, if I don't say something, it leaves no acknowledgement to this. And I know for the most part, these are not my normal viewers need to go to a courtesy class because there's a big difference between being critical and like constructive criticism. So I could take definitely constructive criticism. I actually think it's very helpful, but there's a big difference between being a straight <laughs> And let me finish this whole spiel by saying thank you guys to those of you who were understanding and supportive no matter what. You guys don't understand how much I appreciate it the kind words you guys had. I really do appreciate the comments that were leaving suggestions on how I could improve the video, but still saying positive things instead of just tearing me down and telling me all the bad things I had done. So I really appreciate those supportive comments. Those are the people I'm essentially making this video for. So thank you guys. I know there are a lot of silent viewers out there as well who are understanding and compassionate and well aware of kind of how difficult this can be sometimes being a one woman show, doing all these things you're not kind of trained in and you're self-taught. So yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a shout out and say, I saw you, I appreciate you, and happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Alrighty, let's go ahead and jump into the kind of little skincare bit I included in this video. And the reason why I don't go into skincare too much for this video is because I've talked about skincare so many times on my channel. I'll leave some videos down in the description box below of videos that I think you'd find helpful, including my skincare routine, my skincare shorts where I talk about skincare topics in three minutes or less for those of you guys who have a short attention span like me, or I also have my skincare 101 videos down there as well. So playlists, videos, all that kind of stuff that you'd find helpful when it comes to glass skin and getting that translucent kind of poreless look is going to be a couple things. Now, first off, we're gonna talk about exfoliating because exfoliating is something that helps with cell turnover. It removes dead skin cells. It kind of gives you that soft and good base to start off with. Now, I am going to be recommending these from Neogen. You guys know I love the wine version of these. These are the Bio Peel Goss Peeling Lemon Pads. And these are excellent because not only are they a manual exfoliant, but they are a chemical exfoliant as well. The reason that I'm showing you guys the lemon version is because obviously lemon is excellent for brightening the skin tone, which is another part of this look that's very important. 
Now another exfoliator I would recommend is this one from Tatcha. This is the Polish Gentle Rice Enzyme Powder. I have dry, very sensitive skin, so this is excellent for me because it's a very low abrasive type of exfoliant. It's very gentle on the skin. Now obviously when it comes to the glass skin look, moisturizing your skin is also a very important part of this look. Now keeping your skin well moisturized is important because not only does it plump up the skin and give you a nice base to start off with because it's going to work on those dry patches that tend to be reflected in the glass skin look, but it's also going to act as a barrier between all the layers that we're going to be applying. You can use whatever moisturizer and on top of that whatever exfoliant and product you see in this video that works well for your skin. These are just the products that I use to achieve this look, but these are definitely interchangeable, so whatever works well with your skin. Okay. <laughs> So first, I'm going to obviously start off with my sunscreen. I've really been enjoying this one from Paracone. This is the Daily Brightening Moisturizing Sunscreen with an SPF of 30. I like this because it's also an excellent moisturizer on top of protecting my skin. And like I mentioned in my first video, you are going to hear me say moisture, moisturizing, and moisturizer probably like a thousand times in this video. So now that we've got our sunscreen on, I'm going to go ahead and move on to my primer. Now the primer that I'm going to be using is the VDL Lumi Layer Primer. This is excellent because it has kind of the glow built into this. It has a lavender undertone and just gives your skin that real iridescence that makes it look healthy and that it's glowing from within. And this is just an easy way to accomplish this look. So can you guys see the iridescence already? <laughs> What am I going to do next? Oh yeah, eyebrows. Now when it comes to that Instagram picture I posted on my Instagram, I did wear a little bit of eye makeup, so I'm going to run through that very quickly in case you're curious about what I was wearing. Now starting off with the brows, I do my brows pretty much the same way I do my brows every day. I just kind of fill them in where they naturally grow. I don't emphasize an arch, I don't take away an arch, I just fill them in. Whatever they want to do, we go with it. Now following that for my eyeshadow, I use the 3CE Longwear Eye Crayon in hashtag adorable. And I just ran this over my eyelid really quickly because this is going to be a very soft eye look. And then to set that, I just applied a little bit of this coppery kind of rose gold color. This is from Misha and this is the Atal Prism Modern Shadow Collection. I don't know if this is still available, but you could pick up a similar shade that you like. And then just to make the eyes look very naturally pretty and uplifted, I'm going to go ahead and curl my eyelashes with my Shu Uemura Lash Curler, as well as apply on a little bit of mascara. I've really been enjoying this one from Labiote. This is the Wine Angle Mascara and Volume Fixer. And it's just a very natural looking type of mascara. Now that our eye makeup is done, we've given our sunscreen and our primer a chance to set. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to the foundation. Now for the foundation, you can just go ahead and pick whatever long lasting, dewy type of foundation you like. For me personally, I really love the Shiseido Synchro Skin Glow. This is their Luminizing Fluid Foundation. Or you can go with something like this. These are stick foundations, and these are excellent because they have that like moisturizing core to them. And I'm going to be using, for this tutorial, this one from Agatha. This is their Essential Stick Foundation. It is a little bit light for my skin, so I'm going to blend it down my neck as much as I possibly can. But this is the foundation that I used for that picture, so I want to stay kind of true to that look. Now for me, a crucial part of this look is actually blending in my foundation and this entire look with an air puff. And that's because this will work to really push the makeup into your skin. And obviously when it comes to glass skin or dewy skin, a common issue is having it slip and slide all over your face. So this will kind of help it stick to where you want it to stick to. Now before I finish blending that in completely, I'm going to go ahead and mist my air puff. And the mist that I recommend, obviously there's the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. This is essentially dew in a bottle. But if you're looking for something more affordable, I like this one from Nature Republic. When you shake it, it's going to mix and it's a very moisturizing type of mist. So what I do is I literally just spray my air puff down with whatever mist I choose, and then I go in and blend the foundation. In general, this is also a really good tip for those of you guys who have foundations that set too quickly. This will rewet everything and kind of give you more working time. Now for my concealer, I'm going to be using this from Laneige. This is the Watery Cushion Concealer, and it is obviously more liquidy. So this will kind of maintain the glow we're looking for. And I'm just going to hit obviously areas like underneath my eyes, between my eyebrows where I have a little breakout going on and some marks on my skin. And then you guys said I'm going to go ahead and mist down my air puff and blend this on. So now that I have blended all that in, I'm going to go ahead and selectively set areas of my face. 
Now when I say selectively set, I mainly wanna just hit areas that tend to crease, like under my eyes, and areas like around my hairline where my hair tends to stick to my foundation. And the powder that I'm using is from Moonshot, and this is the Loose Aqua Finisher, and this is a powder that is not a super drying powder. For my cheeks, I'm gonna use this from Adi Tom. This is the Sugar Ball Cushion Blusher, and I love this blusher so much because it just gives you a nice glow to the cheek, and it's a very soft and natural looking type of blush. This is in the shade Daisy Coral, and I'm just gonna quickly blend this onto my cheeks. Just put a little color back in my skin. And then to add a little bit more glow, I'm gonna be using the Laneige Cushion Highlighter and I'm gonna add this to areas that I want to accentuate like the top of my cheekbones, my nose, and right above my eyebrows. So this is the finished base look for my glass skin makeup tutorial. But in case you guys were curious about what I had on my lips in that Instagram photo, I used the Color and Liquid Lips Mousse from Etude House. This in particular is in the shade PK001 and I just kind of did a gradient look. All right, you guys, so this is the finished look for my glass skin tutorial. I hope this was helpful for those of you guys who really wanted to learn how to achieve this look. And as always, I hope you guys are happy and healthy and don't forget to bring, comment, subscribe, share with your friends and family, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Bye.